Today on Legally Us, Patrick Mahomes Sr. is arrested for his sixth DWI. Plus, Taylor Swift sends a cease and desist to a Florida teen, while Jacob Elordi is under investigation for assault. We got that plus so much more in today's Legally Us. everyone, and welcome to Legally Us. I'm Christina. That's Nima Romani, president and CEO of West Coast Trial Lawyers. Hi, Nima. How are you? Fantastic, Christina. How about you? Good, good. Lots of big stories to get to. So let's get right to it. Starting with Jacob Elordi. Now, he is under a police investigation after allegedly assaulting a radio producer in Australia on um, over the weekend over a salt burn joke. So he was at the Globally Hotel in Sydney when he was approached by Joshua Fox. Now, he's a producer for the Kyle and Jackie O Show. And he explained on the radio show that he jokingly asked uh, Jacob for his bath water to give host Jackie O a reference, of course, to that much talked about scene in Saltburn. So that apparently escalated the situation. He claims that he stopped recording their interaction, which he was doing at Jacob's request and agreed with not using the footage. But that's when the actor got up in his face and demanded that he deleted the footage. After being confronted in such a manner, Fox says that he changed his mind over deleting it and said, the way they're surrounding me, I'm thinking something's going to happen here. Someone's going to jump on me or something. So I say, no, I'm not deleting that. He said, I refuse to because I feel uncomfortable right now. And apparently Jacob flipped and pushed him up against the wall and that his hands were on his throat. So um, what what do we make of this? Is Jacob in trouble? Um, And... Does this hurt this person's case by speaking about out about this on a radio show? So Jacob did commit an assault, and it's really a mm-hmm. question of, is it going to be prosecuted? We're talking about Fox being a shock jock, and you know, he has a history. I mean, apparently he brought a rape victim on his show and asked the victim to submit to a lie detector test. So wow. this is something prosecutors may choose not to pursue because mm-hmm. the injuries aren't serious, and... You know, even though there's no real legal defense, um, sometimes you'll hear the expression called fighting words. And that's something that may give prosecutors pause. They might say, well, look, here's someone who was instigating, may not really be a victim. So the short answer is yes, an assault was committed, but I don't think it's going to be prosecuted. here. Right. So it was almost like he was baiting him, seeing how far he could take it before Jacob kind of snapped, which maybe somebody would. Exactly, Christina. And again, you know, I don't want anyone who's watching to think that, you know, that's any type of defense. Really, it's not. Mm -hmm. Words alone really don't give rise to something Mm -hmm. like self-defense, right? You need to actually be in risk of bodily harm for you to use your hands on someone else. But I think given the circumstances here, I think prosecutors would do the right thing, not pursue a case, even though technically an assault was committed. Right. So it just seems like this got a lot of press and it might just go away and we might not be talking about this in a week's time. It may. And of course, you know, Fox can always file a civil lawsuit because assault is both a crime and a civil wrong. So we'll see if that's something that he does or he just lets it go. Yeah. All right. We'll have to wait and see. Um, Moving on over to Patrick Mahomes Sr. This was a big story. Of course, he is the father of Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. Now, he was arrested for driving while intoxicated for at least the sixth time. So he was arrested on February 3rd in Tyler, Texas. And um, he was later released after posting $10,000 bail. He was first arrested on the same charge in March of 2012. Again, the following September, his third charge came in April of 2018, the fourth in November of 2018. Upon his fifth arrest for drunk driving in March 2019, he was jailed from March 15th to April 7th before completing his 40-day sentence on a weekend work release program. Being arrested at least six times for DWI, how does this man still have his license? I have no idea, Christina, how (laughs) Patrick Mahomes Sr. still has his license. Someone dropped the ball here, either Mm -hmm. prosecutors or someone with the DMV there in Texas. I mean, you know... Second or third DUIs or DWIs usually result in some time. And here's someone who's now been arrested for a six. He clearly has an alcohol problem. This goes beyond any AA or Mothers Against Drunk Driving class. This is someone that really should never be behind the wheel of a vehicle. And it's certainly a distraction for a son as he prepares for the Super Bowl. With so many offenses now under his belt, will he face some jail time now? 
I think he will, and he should. And mm-hmm. in California, for instance, someone like Patrick Mahomes Sr. would have an interlock ignition device on his vehicle, which means that he can't even start his car unless he blows into it. So that's something that he probably needs there in Texas, and he needs a lot of help because someone that mm-hmm. should not be driving. And let's not forget, he admitted to being under the influence of alcohol, and he had an open container in the car there in Texas right. when he was arrested. Yeah. Does that is that an additional offense if you have an open container, or is that just just mount to your problems? I guess <laughs> it is an additional offense as well. That's mm-hmm. unlawful. Whether you're a driver or a passenger, you can't have an open container in the vehicle, and of course, driving with the influence of drugs or alcohol. That's the more serious charge. But the open container is something that they can and should charge as well. Would his attorney um, now say? in not exchange for jail time, but in lieu of jail time, would he go to a rehab program instead? Or is he probably going to still face jail time no matter what? I think he still will get jail time no matter what, given that it's a mm-hmm. sixth offense. But certainly rehab is something that prosecutors and judges look as mitigation. Here's someone that is trying to better themselves and get the help that they need. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to be a defense to the case. But it's something in mitigation that the judge may consider in imposing a lesser sentence because this is someone who's trying to get clean. Totally. Obviously, he's probably not a flight risk, but he is allowed to travel to the Super Bowl. Surprised he's allowed to do that, or does one thing have really nothing to do with the other? So generally, when you're talking about bail, it's based on two factors, risk of flight. And of course, Mm -hmm. you know, Patrick Mahomes Sr. is pretty well known. He was a baseball Mm -hmm. player. He's not a risk of flight. He has strong ties to the community. But the other factor is danger to the community. And, Mm -hmm. you know, a judge at some point might say, well, here's someone who's dangerous because even after they're released, they get behind the wheel again under the influence of alcohol. So at some point, I think a judge may incarcerate Patrick Mahomes Sr. if he does continue to drink and drive. Interesting. Uh, Moving on over to another interesting story. So Taylor Swift's attorneys have threatened legal action against a Florida college student who runs social media accounts tracking the flights of her and other celebrities' private jets. So Jack Sweeney, he's a junior at the University of Central Florida, has for years run accounts that log the takeoffs and landings of planes and helicopters owned by hundreds of billionaires, politicians, and other public figures. So along with estimates of their planet warming emissions, the accounts use publicly available data from the Federal Aviation Administration and volunteer volunteer hobbyists who can track the aircraft via the signals they broadcast. Kind of crazy. Um, His accounts fueled a free speech debate in late late 2022 when um, X, formerly Twitter, banned Sweeney for sharing what the platform's owner, Elon Musk, said were his assassination coordinates. In December, um, Taylor's attorney at the Washington law firm Venable wrote Sweeney a cease and desist letter saying, She would have no choice but to pursue any and all legal remedies if he did not stop his stalking and harassing behavior. So is this stalking and harassing behavior? Not necessarily, Christina and Swifties. Don't hate me, but this is not a good legal case. You know, this is public information. And I understand that Taylor Swift has had a stalker recently. We've talked about him on Legally Us. But here's someone who is relying on information that's available to the public. You know, Swift has no legal right to keep it private. Now, of course, if it goes beyond posting information, if, you know, you start getting into messages to Swift directly or showing up at our house or all the other types of harassing conduct that we've previously discussed, that's one thing. But posting publicly available information is not unlawful. I think Taylor Swift's lawyers are going too far. And if they were to actually file a case, I think they would lose. Right. So this, so he is in all of his legal boundaries posting because this is public information. So he's allowed to post this. But what, going back to what Elon Musk said that these are his assassination coordinates, is it dangerous to be posting these things though? Look, it potentially is. And, you know, when Mm -hmm. you're talking about social media, there are people that will say, don't post when Mm -hmm. you are physically in a location, post afterwards. If you may be a target, if you may be robbed. But again, there's nothing unlawful if I saw, you know, one of the celebrities on the show, you know, somewhere here in Los Angeles where I live and I post it in real time. I mean, that Mm -hmm. is public space and Mm -hmm. I have a First Amendment right to post that. So if they come after Mm -hmm. me and say, well, Nima or anyone else, why are you posting my location? I'll say, well, I have every right to do so. So I think Venable's Taylor Swift's firm is wrong here. 
Do you think that they're using this more as like a scare tactic then? If like, I'm sure that they would know that this maybe is not going to be a legal win. So do you think that maybe they're just doing this to scare this college student? I think so. Lawyers Mm -hmm. um, sometimes do things not necessarily because they think they're going to win, but, you know, to send a message. And Taylor Mm -hmm. Swift has unlimited resources, a lot of money, access to the best lawyers. And you're talking about someone who's a teenager in college in Florida and is probably not Mm going to be able to defend this case. So, you know, it's really the cease and desist. They're hoping that he stops doing so. Look, obviously Taylor Swift has a concern, which is why she Mm -hmm. reached out to her lawyers and her lawyers sent a threatening letter. But a threatening letter doesn't mean anything if it's not supported by the law. And I think that's the case here. All right. We'll have to see what happens. Well, Nima, thank you so much as always. Lots of very interesting cases this week. Yes, very, Christina, and I'll see you next week. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.